The story or stories you are about to hear are to entertain. The writers of these stories may claim they are true, yet they may not be. That is up to you to decide. After all, this world is a strange one. Out of the way trailer parks, middle of nowhere homesteads, isolation from others. The boondocks is defined as rough, remote, or isolated country, and that's where some of the spookiest stuff goes down. Today, I have five scary stories about the horrors that go down in the boondocks. If you have a scary story of your own, share it with us at darkstories.org. I'd love to hear tales about forbidden places. Now, let's begin. The Haunted Trailer from James E. F. Back in the 1990s in the state of Virginia, I was a kid. My family lived in a small trailer park. I had two brothers and a sister, and I was the oldest of my siblings. But because of my smaller than average size and my youthful luck, I didn't look nearly like I was the oldest. Growing up, I remember my parents mentioning that my youngest brother would get up in the middle of the night, screaming and running around the trailer. My dad would grab him and calm him down, and afterwards he would help my brother back into the bedroom. My baby brother also mentioned that he would see things at night, but I never thought much about it, because I never believed in ghosts or the boogeyman, and thought that the things he saw were just in his head. That is, until I saw something that I'll never forget. One night I got up late. I had to go to the bathroom. Lucky for me, it wasn't too far away from the bedroom that I shared with my brothers. After I flushed the toilet and washed my hands, I turned off the light and I opened the door. But there, standing in our hallway, was something that I still can't explain. I saw some kind of figure right there in the hallway, close to my bedroom door. It was all white. So white it almost seemed bright in the dark, but it had no light. I could make out that it had the shape of a human, and that's about all I could see. I couldn't tell what their face looked like. I couldn't see the rest of their body. Not in detail. At first, I thought it was my mom or dad checking in on me and my siblings. My parents' bedroom was all the way at the other end of the trailer, so I thought I would have heard them if they walked past the bathroom. And even though I thought it was one of my parents, I found myself too scared to ask who they were or what they were doing. I was afraid that if I went to my room, the thing would lunge at me and I was too scared to go back in the bathroom because I figured it would come after me and try to get in. As I stood there, I then began to think, what if it wasn't my mom or dad? I wanted to scream for help, but I thought if I made any noise at all, this mysterious thing, this figure, would come for me. As I stood there with fear thinking about what I should do, I realized that I couldn't stand there all night. I had to make a decision. I began to move back to my bedroom, never taking my eyes off of the white figure in the hall. I closed the door to my room, got into my bed, and I hid under the covers. For the next few days and nights, things were just normal, and I never thought of the mysterious figure again. That is, until several nights later. I woke up, and I could not sleep for some reason after that. So I lay there on my left side in bed, facing towards the wall. Eventually, I turned over to the right, and there I saw the figure again. Only this time, it was right next to my bed. My brothers and I have a bunk bed, and I sleep on the bottom bunk. Whatever this thing was, it was kneeling next to the bed. I know that it was kneeling, it didn't seem to be as tall when I saw it before. However, after my second encounter with this thing, I finally realized 
that it wasn't my mom or dad. When I saw it again, I still could not see its face. I wanted to scream like before, but once again, I was afraid. Afraid that if I made any sound, it would try to silence me, attack me. It was so close to me that if it wanted to, it could have managed to hurt me before my parents could reach the room to help. Once again, I pulled the covers and sheets over my head, too scared to sleep, and I hoped it would go away. I never did see the mysterious white human figure again. When I finally had the courage to tell my family what I saw, none of them believed me. My sister and her friends who come over to visit would often tease me whenever they remembered the story. They thought it was funny to joke around and say that they had seen the mysterious thing too. I knew that they were lying though, by the tones of their voices and their laughter. Even my youngest brother who said he would see people at night in his window or in the bedroom never believed my story, especially as he got older. Around the year 2013, my family moved out of the trailer and moved into a new house. We never had to go back. As for my little brother, he would tell people about the things he saw in that trailer as a kid. He would continue to claim they were real, but never believe my own stories. Over the years as we grew up, my sister got married and moved out to live on her own. She started to reveal to people her own tales. Turns out she's now having some strange experiences in the house she lives in now. First Encounters of the Hairy Variety From Raido I grew up in a very rural, poverty-stricken part of North Carolina, about a mile away from Tar River. The area in which I lived was a bit swampy, with heavy, dense woods all around the single-wide home that we lived in. During the summers, when we had abundant time to spend traipsing around the creeks and fields around the area, my siblings and I would spend from dawn until well after dusk playing around in the woods, the river, everywhere, basically. As children, our parents argued a lot. We were very poor and they would frequently fight about jobs and money for days and days, so we always preferred to be out of earshot of them. This meant we'd have to play outside, and that meant we played in the forests. Now, we'd always had some experiences around the river, but we could always explain it away. Branches snapping, rocks tossed around, the crunching of leaves in the distance... Nothing was as scary as being at home with them, though. Looking back, I think something was influencing my parents' attitudes and emotions. But that's a whole different story. The first time I saw one, it was just the beginning of fall. The sun had almost gone completely down, leaving a sliver of red and purple that faded into a black abyss. My parents had a huge argument that ended with both of them raging out of the house. My mother sped off in her car, and my dad walked out into the darkness of the woods. As a few hours passed, I began to grow worried about the whereabouts of my dad. So I strapped on my boots, grabbed my dog, and walked out the door. I began to walk around our small backyard, trying to find any clue to where my dad had gone. I looked behind me, and upon the ridge I saw a shadow walking around, the moon illuminating the sky. I decided that must be my father, and ran up to the tall hill to meet him. At the top I looked around, but I didn't see anyone. And then suddenly my dog, a very laid-back and soft pit bull, growled this horrible guttural sound. I felt the hair on my neck shoot straight up my arms covered in goosebumps. Without thinking, I shot down the hill, running as quickly as my legs could carry me. As I got to where the property began, I saw my dad sitting on a felled log. He looked angry still, and his expression softened a bit when he saw my face. Dad, were you just up on the hill? 
I asked. I was exhausted by then. He looked at me perplexed. No, I've been here the whole time. I saw you walk up there and wondered what you were doing, where you were going. He explained. I told him we should probably go back inside, since there's probably a bear around. As we were heading back in, my mother pulled up, got out of her car and told my dad, We need to talk about this. I went inside, figuring they would sit in the car and talk about things. Things that I didn't want to hear about. In the back of our yard, we had a makeshift fire pit, which they had decided to sit around as they talked. About five minutes after I walked inside and began to get ready for bed, I heard banging on our back door. It was my mom. Open this door, now! My room was right beside the back door, so I rushed to it, unlocking the door to see the terrified faces of my parents tripping over each other to get inside. Then I saw it, standing just outside the line of trees, holding a decent-sized sapling it had snapped. All I could do was stare at it. This thing screamed, a bone-chilling howl. I snapped out of my trance and slammed the weak door closed and locked it. Though I knew if it really wanted to get in, it could just rip the door off the trailer. I stopped going in the woods after that. Every spring and autumn, they would come through. I don't know what they are. I don't know if they migrate, what it is they do at all. But as they come through, they whoop and they holler. They whistle and they scream. They bang on the sides of the trailer. The second time I saw one, I was trying to get some sleep. A hard thing to do when one suffers from insomnia. I finally gave up trying and turned over to get a book to read, when I noticed the shadow being cast on the floor from my window. Slowly, I shifted my gaze up to the window. There, sort of stooping down, stood one of them. It was peering into my window, resting one of its hands upon the AC unit outside. It tapped on the glass and let out a low whistle. I lay in my bed, just staring into whatever it was. It stood there letting out various whistles and clicks for about ten minutes, before it tapped one last time. Then it stepped back and walked back into the woods. I didn't feel threatened. I think maybe it was just curious. There's a lot of mysterious, weird things that go on in the swampy woods around Tar River in North Carolina. Some things natural, and some things otherworldly. Paranormal Magnet from Xanathar I'm 41 years old, and I've had a life full of strange things that I cannot explain. I'm not one of those types that just believes every little thing I hear or see. I prefer to be skeptical before I make any judgments. That being said, I want to share this experience that happened to me in my early 20s. I was living in Arizona at the time, around late 1997. I used to live in a desert area, close to some large peaks on federal land. I'd found this peak-side cove. Not quite a cave, but a semi-half-cave. I even brought my friend there a couple of times to hike and hang out. One day we rolled some huge boulders off the peak and watched them smash everything below. We had slingshots that we would shoot at rotting cactus, and we would listen to the rocks ricochet. Well, one day I went there all alone. I had an ominous feeling like I was not welcome there, and that danger was near. The next thing I knew, I hear a helicopter in the distance. People really weren't supposed to be on federal land, so I took it as a sign to get the heck out of Dodge. I had a bike which I rode as fast as I could home, which was about two to four miles away. I went to the backyard to soak my head in our pool. It was hot that day. 
A few seconds later, a black, unmarked helicopter shows up literally a mere couple hundred feet from my home's roof, just hovering there, seemingly watching me. I thought to myself, don't look up at it, just pet your dog. Eventually, the helicopter flew away, and I really didn't think much more of it. It was weird, okay, no big deal, right? A month or two passed, and things began to get really strange. I never did sleepwalk or have night terrors or any kind of sleep disorder, but I would keep waking up to a cloud or mist that was in a small human-shaped form above me. I would swat at it with pillows or my fist and not know what was going on. Every few months, this would happen. In fact, this kept going on from late 1997 all the way to 2004. Later on, I moved away, got married, and actually moved a few more times. But no matter where I moved, still these clouds followed. My ex-wife even witnessed one at the same time, but also mentioned that for a couple of years into the marriage, I would sometimes sit up in my sleep, eyes wide open, and speak seemingly ancient-sounding language. We laughed it all off as silly. Soon, 2004 came. This was the final time I ever had any more sleep disturbances. There was a night when my ex-wife worked very late. Till around 2 or 3 a.m. I was way asleep by this time, or I should have been. Upon her arrival home, there was howling and growling all around our cabin with no visible, reasonable source like dogs or coyotes to be seen. My ex was scared and got inside very quickly. She could hear more growling inside the home. It was from the room in which I was sleeping. She came into the dark room and saw me standing on the bed, looking contorted. She even thought that my eyes had blackened. She thought I was doing a usual sleepwalking type thing at first, then went to touch me to get me to lay back down, just as she would in the past. However, all hell broke loose. She said my contorted body leapt at her. She screamed and prepared to defend herself. She said I was making some kind of demonic screeching wailing sound. I think I partially remember that part. Maybe part of my subconscious was awake or something. But I came to then, and I was as terrified as she was. I had to calm her down after I came to. I told her that I was in control now. It was me, but even my voice was beyond creepy. She claims it sounded like the Indrid Cold voice from that Richard Gere Mothman Prophecies movie. Our bedroom door as well had somehow shut itself and my cat was pacing around frantically to leave. Now, you might say it was a night terror. I know what those are, and while it seems similar, I had one last experience two weeks later. I had a statue of Apollo. I woke up one night and saw its eyes bright blue. I was scared, but I picked it up and put it away from the window into complete darkness, but somehow its eyes were still glowing. Instead of being afraid, I simply put it on the floor with the blanket over it. And after that, not since 2004 have I woke up seeing something ghostly or cloud-like or strange. I haven't even talked in my sleep. I'm not into religion, but a little bit of faith doesn't hurt, I guess. This may be ridiculous to some, but I know what happened to me was real, and I don't really need to prove it to anyone. I'd love to hear stories from those with similar tales. My house growing up was haunted. From Rosie Thorne 828. I live in New Hampshire in a tiny town in the middle of nowhere. I'm not sure what the exact population of my village is, but you can easily walk from one end of the town to the other in less than half an hour. My town, which I will call Small Place, is on a large lake connected to several smaller lakes. 
my mom, brother, and I live on one of those smaller lakes. I wanted to tell people about my experiences in this house because they've gotten much worse in the past few months, ever since my grandma died. My grandma, who passed away about 10 months ago, had lived in the house for just over 20 years. No one had owned the house before that. This place was a completely blank slate, which I think is why so many spirits feel at home here. My grandparents are both dead now, but when they were younger, they owned an antique shop which I suspect held many cursed or haunted items. Eventually, my grandparents retired, and much of what was in the shop moved into my current home with them. My grandpa, or Gramps, my mom's dad, was a bit of a hoarder, so most of the furniture and other knickknacks in the house were his. He collected everything from model soldiers to ventriloquist dummies, even music boxes, and for better or for worse, a lot of these objects had energies about them, and I think some of them had spirits attached to them. One of my first paranormal experiences in the house was from when I was very young. There was a large wooden puppet or doll that always sat behind a bar downstairs in our sitting area. The doll could be seen when you walked up or down the stairs, and for whatever reason, my little brother and I were always scared of it. Anytime we'd go up the stairs, we would hear that puppet creak or see it move out of the corner of our eyes. Then we would sprint back upstairs. Honestly, I never really understood why we kept the dumb thing, but whenever we tried to move it, it would wind up right back at the bottom of the stairs behind the bar. I remember one time when I was 11 or 12, I decided to conduct an experiment of sorts. I moved the doll puppet thingy while everyone was upstairs for dinner, and when we came back down, it had moved. I knew that no one had been downstairs, and there was no way the puppet had been brought back to its usual sitting place. This is only one instance of a haunting in my house, and there are many other entities that don't seem to have specific items they're attached to. One of these is the ghost on the stairs. About a year ago, we finally got rid of that doll-slash-puppet from before. But for some reason, my brother and I still found the stairs to have some negative energy about them, which became even more apparent when we got a dog. We got a Shih Tzu, who we named Charlie. This only happened around a month ago, and it's what prompted me to record my experiences. So my brother and I were hanging out downstairs when we hear my mom whistle for us. My mom can do this really loud two-finger whistle that she uses to get our attention when we're playing video games. We head upstairs, and I'm in front of my brother. As I'm going, I stub my toe on something sharp, and I begin to fall. My brother tries to catch me, but I end up causing both of us to fall down the stairs. At that moment... Our mom comes in the front door with Charlie, who immediately runs to the top of the stairs and begins to bark like mad. Almost like he wants to help, but he's too scared to actually come down the stairs. My brother and I ask my mom what she wanted us for, but she looks confused, telling us she didn't call. She said that she had been out with the dog for 15 minutes. To this day, Jack and I can't figure out who called us, or what I stubbed my toe on. I have a ton of other stories, but those are two of my tamer ones. If you ever want to hear something scarier, I definitely have a lot to share. It ran from CLJ HMN. My fiancé Andrew and I moved into the home I grew up in. The old home had been vacant for years. He enlisted his best friend John to stay with us while he helped do some minor repairs and cleaning. I was pregnant with our daughter at the time. Andrew and I slept in the master bedroom, and John took one of the guest rooms as his own while he stayed. I came home from work one day to find Andrew and John acting weird. They told me hours before I arrived 
They'd been working in the backyard. John looked up to see a pale woman with dark hair standing at the kitchen window, staring outside in his direction. He called out to Andrew, asking him if I was supposed to be home early. Andrew replied, shaking his head and answering no. By this time, John and Andrew were both looking at the female figure staring back at them. Finally, it backed away from the window and out of view. As they were telling me about this, I got serious goosebumps. However, we decided to ignore the ghostly woman and went about our day. A few days later, Andrew and John were outside working again when they saw the same woman walk down the hallway and past the back door window. Again, I came home to two grown men scared to be in the house without me there. As Andrew is six foot three and 280 pounds, and John himself is a kickboxer, it was a bizarre sight. I found their fear of a ghostly woman almost amusing. Until the night it happened. Fast forward two years and some minor scares later. Small things had happened like cabinet doors being opened when we know they were closed, lights being on when we know they'd all been off. Our daughter had been born in 2009. John had moved out for about a year, but the guest room he slept in was still furnished. Sometimes Andrew and I would sleep in that room because we could watch a movie together and fall asleep there. The night this happened, Andrew and I had just finished a movie and the baby had fallen asleep between us. I wanted to wait a couple more minutes before I moved her to her crib, so I just laid there, not moving and not sleeping. Andrew was on the outside of the bed, also being perfectly still and perhaps on the verge of sleep. We had no pets inside the house, nothing that could explain what happened next. The sound of heavy feet began taking fast steps in the living room, moving quicker and quicker with each step until it was at a dead run down the hallway towards our room and the guest bathroom at the end of the hall. Hearing the first few heavy steps brought me straight up in the bed, and by the time the stomping running feet passed our bedroom door, I was stepping over Andrew's legs and onto the floor. It crashed into the bathroom door so hard, the springy doorstop on the bathroom wall was vibrating. Andrew was sitting up in bed, pale with fear, and asked what the heck that was. By this point, I have my hand on the bedroom doorknob. All I can say is, I don't know. Stay with the baby while I go look. I opened the bedroom door and saw the bathroom door still moving slowly back and forth. Scared to death that I might find this huge, heavy thing that had run down my hallway and crashed into the bathroom, Scared to see what uninvited guest was only yards from my tiny baby, I quickly and quietly covered the short distance from bedroom to bathroom. I stopped at the swinging door, and without going into the dark bathroom, I thrust my hand in the direction of the wall switch, flicking on the light. Nothing was there. I took a few more fast steps and yanked the shower curtain back so hard that it tore a few rings out, but there was nothing there. Glad to not have found a psychopath or something, I returned to the bedroom. Andrew was there holding our sleeping baby, sitting up in bed. What was it? What did you see? He asked. Nothing, I replied. Nobody. Whatever crashed into the door is gone. But where did it go? There's no way for it to leave. The bathroom window is too small for anyone to shimmy through, he said. I shook my head. I don't know was the only answer I had. He stayed in the guest bedroom with our baby while I checked the rest of the house. It was empty, so I locked up. No surprise there. I always made sure the place was locked every night. We were so scared and shaken we decided to spend the rest of the night at his dad's house, 45 minutes away. We loaded up the baby and her things. And then we left. We didn't speak of what happened until the next day, 
With the light of the day, it didn't seem any less scary, but we were able to return home. But we never slept in that room again. As you can see, The Boondocks is more than just a masterpiece of animation and comedy that originally aired on Adult Swim. It's a type of location you want to avoid. Isolation, rough neighborhoods, and rural living. If you find yourself in these circumstances, prepare yourself, because things are going to get creepy. Good night. If you enjoyed this episode of Darkness Prevails, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. If you have a scary story of your own, share it with us at darkstories.org. I'd love to narrate it. If you want to support the show, check the links in the description. There's a link to my Patreon and a link to my merch store. Well, that's all the stories we have for today, but more scary stories are on the way. Tune in next time. And until then, here are the credits to my amazing patrons who continue to help us. I thank them all so much. Remember, stay safe out there and stay creepy, because this world is a strange one. Thank <laughs> you.